Ladies and gents, we got an election coming up. And I want to talk to all the car enthusiasts out there to say, I hope, first of all, that you guys are voting. It's important to vote. But I hope you're voting in the right way. I do believe there is a right way and a wrong way to vote. And unfortunately, what we tend to see online, on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram, is the wrong way to vote. A large portion of the population in the US is actually reasonable. They're not far left, they're not far right, they're not pointing the finger saying, these are the enemies, these are evil people. Because the truth is, if you're on one extreme, pointing the finger at the other side, saying you guys are the problem, just zoom out, pause and zoom out. Do you really think that factually, objectively, these are evil people that are trying to fight against you and bring you down and tear down the country? Probably not. You guys just probably have different views on the world and because of the social circles you're a part of or the content that you consume and the stories that you're reading or watching, you see the world through a certain lens. And that causes you to think of the other side as worse than it really is. But there is a substantial portion of people in the middle, the moderates, people that see each issue individually. They don't say, I align with everything from the left. I don't align with everything from the right. Maybe they say, I'm with the left on this one issue and with the right on a different issue and vice versa. If someone always sides with one side or the other, think about it. Is it most likely that they arrived at those conclusions on their own? <laughs> probably not. They probably arrived at those conclusions because they simply adopted the identity of that group of people. The us versus them. Okay, we, this group, believes this cluster of beliefs. That's not a serious thinker. That's someone that just adopts an identity and is a lazy thinker. The person that says, I agree with three policies here, but five policies there, therefore I'm gonna vote for the, the party that I agree with five policies on, and maybe it's not even the number of policies, because you may say, this one policy, out of these three, they're more important policies that I, I give a heavier weighting to or whatnot, than the five smaller ones here. Whatever you wanna do, look at each individual policy and make a decision. Too many people are focused on the personality of a politician, and honestly, I do not give a fuck. And prior cycles, prior years, and even in this year, I go to procon.org or some other website that's similar that tries to be as independent and neutral as possible and tells me about the policies of each, of each candidate on each issue. And I go down the list and I tally how many do I agree with one side, how many do I agree with the other. And yeah, there are certain, pol certain uh, topics, certain issues that I care more about. So maybe I count more points for that. Maybe rather than one point, I give it two points or three points or four points. But I tally and then I vote for the candidate that has the highest number of tallies. That's what I did last cycle. That's what I'm doing again this cycle. The hard part is to actually find objective data on the policies is very challenging. For the president, it's a lot easier. But I got my ballot and I was voting for Las Vegas and for Nevada, Senate, Congress, etc. And when I was researching candidates, I found it so challenging to just understand what their policies were. Because when I looked, when I Google searched, it was all these high, highly, highly biased news sources that were clearly pro one candidate, anti the other candidate, that weren't even telling me about the policy. They were just telling me how terrible of a person the opposing candidate was. That, that's not fucking helpful. It's just a matter of who can tell the worst story about the other person, whether or not it's true. That's, that's not a good, reliable way to vote. I ultimately relied on ChatGPT. I said, hey, tell me about the policies of both candidates. Tell me the arguments for and against these various policies. And it was far more objective in telling me the actual arguments for, you know, because you just read the summary on a certain issue 
you don't fully understand the pros and cons. You're not an expert on those things. I'm not an expert on those things. We need to educate ourselves. So you ask for the pros and cons on each. And once you learn those pros and cons, you're in a better position to make an informed judgment, an informed decision. Thank you, Waze, for the warning. But far too many people focus, and you know, my text messages and WhatsApp is blowing up with political stuff from friends and family members. And I have to remind them, guys, guys, I don't care about the personality characteristics or traits about a certain candidate. I do not give a fuck because ultimately that does not influence me. What influences me and my country and my friends and family are the policies. I don't care how good or bad of a speaker they are, how they acted on whatever podcast or whatever interview. I, I do not give a fuck. I just care about policies. And I'm going to vote for the candidate or the party that aligns with those policies. And it's ultimately people in the middle, like me, that sway the vote year to year. Because those people who are diehard left or diehard right, they vote the same way every fucking cycle. And it's those 10, 20% people in the middle that actually have a critical way of thinking about things, not just identity politics, but let me think about the actual policies here, the pros and cons of what I think is best for the country, best for me, and best for my friends and family. They're the ones who actually, they're the ones who actually sway the decision. Now, if you, if I'm offending you, it's probably because you're on one of those extremes. And just consider, did you independently conclude that your position on all those issues just by chance happen to always line up with your particular party, whether that's left or right? Or did you identify as that party and then you begin to believe the things that you were told about what that party believes? Because I would argue it's the latter. It is very, very rare that in a critical, serious thinker, an individual who is independent and thinks for themselves is going to by chance, completely aligned with one of two opposing parties. It is very, very improbable. And I get it, based on where you grew up, based on your social circles, your friends and family. If you were born in California, you probably lean left, but not necessarily. If you were born in Texas, you probably lean right, but not necessarily. I think the world would be a lot better off if instead of attacking people just because they disagreed with us on whatever political policy or political party, we ask them with curiosity to explain their side. Because for most issues, if you have a sizable portion of, of people on both sides who feel very strongly about their side being right, there's probably some validity. There's, there's some positives to each side's argument, right? You hear them out. Don't just try to straw man their argument and tear it down. Actually try to understand the pros, build their side up. And only then, once you really understand the pros from both sides and then the cons from both sides, can you make that informed decision. Back when I was on dating apps, I would occasionally come across girls that in their profile would say, if you voted for X candidate, not interested. And I was like, cool, not interested in you. Not because I voted for the same or different candidate. In fact, I might have voted for the same candidate that that they had voted for. But it was more that if someone was that close-minded, I knew that they, they and I would never get along because if you're curious, if you want to understand the world, there's simply no room to adopt that way of thinking, to have the in-group versus out-group, because it just dumbs down your thinking. It, it cheapens your whole worldview. I remember going on a date with a girl, actually. Went to this awesome speakeasy, amazing first date, vibing. And later on, I learned that she was very strongly political in one way. And I tried to just test the waters and say, hey, but like, what if someone believed this thing? I remember this one time, I was in med school, and I'm riding passenger, there's three of us in the car, and a political issue comes up. I think it was immigration, actually. And 
By the way, for those wondering, I have voted both left and right in my life. It depends on the year, so I don't identify with either party. I definitely identify as moderate, and on certain issues, I'm more right. On certain issues, I'm more left. That's just the way that I think things should be done. And in fact, I like living in places that are more balanced. I think if you go to any state or locale that is too far in one direction, look at San Francisco. I think there are a lot of issues with it being way too far left, and you look at some other places in the south that I think have some issues with being way too far right. I think when you find that moderate balance, life is better. But anyways, this, uh, I was riding passenger and two other med students in the car. And if you're in med school, you must at least be not stupid, right? Like you can, you can think critically to some degree. So I'm looking forward to having this conversation with my, my friends and colleagues here. And the issue of immigration came up. I said, okay, I want to understand both sides because honestly, I don't have a strong opinion. I have always been the kind of person that does not, if, if you ask me what my issue, what my stance is on an issue, I will tell you, I don't know. I need to know more about it. Whereas a lot of people first make up their mind and then they're willing to die on that hill that they hadn't even thought about. So my friend was like, oh yeah, we need to just open up the, the, the borders for immigration. Why should we, why should there be any limitation? I said, oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Because we want to be more inclusive. My parents were immigrants. I get that. But then what happens if you let everyone through? Like, is, are there downsides? What's the, I just want to understand the pros and cons of a certain issue. But unfortunately, that colleague of mine hadn't really thought it through and the whole conversation fell flat on its face. Now, whether you're, you wanna be more lenient or more restrictive with immigration isn't really the issue. It's just about having the conversation and talking about the pros and cons. Hey, if we are more lenient, what are the pros and cons? And if we are more restrictive, what are the pros and cons? Let's talk about that single issue, the pros and cons, then decide where we stand, whether we are pro-restrictive, pro-lax, uh, and then let's go on to the next issue. And let's do that issue by issue by issue. And that's how we actually solve problems and get to the root of things and talk about issues rather than just identity politics. Anyway, my friends, if you are offended by this video, then consider you're probably part of the problem. And for the rest of you, much love, and I'll see you all in the next one.